The Senator from New Jersey is recognized. Mr. Pray, I understand morning business at this point has uh, ended. It is about to close. Uh, uh, well, Mr. President, uh, I ask unanimous consent that the period for morning business be extended until 12.30 p.m. with senators permitted to speak for up to 10 minutes each. And further, I ask consent that the Senate stand in recess from 12.30 to 1.15 p.m. Is there objection? Hearing no objection, so ordered. Mr. President, uh, See. Mr. President, thank you. Mr. President, our, our nation needs to take a critical step to move our economy forward. Now, we had a chance last night to make that happen. We had a chance here in the Senate to make that happen. We had a chance to pass a package that would provide relief to more Americans, that would put rebates uh, in the hands of more taxpayers that would give checks to more than 20 million seniors that were not in the House bill, that would have taken the opportunity to put money in the hands of 250,000 disabled veterans in our country, to extend unemployment benefits for those who are looking to find work but cannot find work in this economy and who are on the verge uh, of finding themselves without unemployment compensation benefits, uh, and to provide important relief for businesses that are suffering and help those most in need with the cost of heating their homes this winter. But our Repub many, not all, but enough to stop that process, many of our Republican colleagues bucked that opportunity. They said they wanted to deliver relief as quickly as possible. But when they had the chance to provide that relief to the most Americans, far more than the House bill, they said no. So, Mr. Uh, President, you know, I, I listen uh, to our colleagues here. And I say to myself, well, what, what is it? What is it that says to so many in our country, it says to seniors, fixed incomes having increasing their demands in their fuel costs and their heating costs for those who still own, own their homes or for those who pay utility bills, uh, for rising prescription costs, uh, for so many, for so many different elements of their lives, and they are, have fixed incomes. They've worked a lifetime, and find themselves now with these challenges. They cannot, they cannot uh, meet the challenges economically. Why do they, those 20 million, not deserve to be part of a stimulus package, especially when they will put that money right back into our economy extremely quickly? which is the whole purpose of stimulus in the first place. But if we can have stimulus that also helps a broad section of our universe, those who have worked hard, played by the rules, helped build families and communities, and now find themselves struggling, why wouldn't we do that? Why wouldn't we take care of disabled veterans and have them be part of helping to meet their challenges? They serve their nation with honor and dignity and now find themselves challenged. Why wouldn't we have them be part of a solution that also helps to stimulate the economy. So for all this talk about quickness, it's also quickness and the ability to make this happen in a way that will have the real impact we want in our economy, but a real impact also in the lives of Americans who are struggling. Far too many Americans have already suffered at the hands of an economy that is sliding backwards. Far too many have seen their homes taken away from them on the brink of foreclosures. Far too many have been in search of work or have been waiting in vain for their paychecks to increase. And for those who have not yet felt the effects of an economy that is sputtering, they fear and worry, wondering when they will feel the squeeze. And that worry is understandable. The signs are less than good. Last Friday, we learned that 17,000 jobs were lost in January alone the first monthly loss of jobs in more than four years. 
Growth slowed to a near halt at the end of last year, coming in under, under 1%. And we saw the biggest increase in unemployment rates since after September 11th. We all overwhelmingly agree on the need to take action to stimulate our economy and fast. It's wonderful uh, to have come to that type of consensus on the need. What we need is a genuine spirit of bipartisanship here in the Senate uh, to bring us forward to that conclusion. We had that opportunity yesterday. Now, certainly what the House did uh, is a very solid sm start. It would largely achieve what we would hope to see in a stimulus plan. But with as many first attempts, there are clearly some very significant holes. The House plan would get us almost, but not quite, where we should be. And Mr. President, this was our chance, and hopefully we will revisit it, our chance to get it right. We aren't talking about adding a load of new provisions, as some are implying. We're talking about making sensible changes to make sure that we will have the most benefit for those most in need, and at the same time, because we are helping the most benefit for those who are most in need, we are helping achieve the goal that we want, stimulating the economy in a way that we will either avoid a recession, although certainly Wall Street is telling us they're convinced there is a recession, or at least narrow the time and the scope and the impact of that recession. Now, the value of any plan we consider should be based on one simple benchmark, the number of people we can reach and how effectively we can put needed dollars into our economy. Based on that benchmark, the Senate clearly has a better plan. The economic stimulus package we have before us is a plan that the Senate and the country can get behind. It will get money into the hands of people who have basic needs to cover, people who will spend it immediately. That's the first goal of stimulus. Our plan puts rebates in the hands of 20 million seniors. Mr. President, it may not have been intentional, but the fact is the House plan leaves out millions of seniors, as I said before, who are low income, whose primary source of income is Social Security. In my home state of New Jersey, more than one million seniors are eligible for a rebate under the Senate plan. Under the House bill, they wouldn't receive a dime. And if we think there is no economic link to including seniors, the fact is seniors spend much more of their income than any other age group. People over the age of 65 are responsible for a full 14% of all consumer spending. The bottom line is a true stimulus package would help those who spend the most and are most in need. The Senate plan does just that. The Senate plan also reaches another group that is excluded from the House bill, disabled veterans. Under our plan, we ensure that a quarter million disabled veterans who would not otherwise receive a rebate will get a check. When those veterans went to war, they never forgot who they were fighting for, and we cannot forget them now. In several ways, the Senate plan puts resources towards where economists agree they're most effective, extending unemployment because uh, extending unemployment benefits. And it isn't just common sense because it helps those who are suffering most. That is, of course, common sense. But it also gets the best bang for the buck in economic terms. For every dollar that we invest in extending unemployment benefits, we generate a dollar sixty-four in economic activity. And despite broad consensus, and by the way, Mr. President, we also do it in such a way, this universe is known. They're out there. They're facing an immediate challenge. Uh, they will have their, the resources in their hand much quicker than formulating a rebate check. So it's another reason, timeliness, timelessness. And despite broad consensus that such a stimulus plan must include additional benefits for those who have been out of work for an extended period of time, such benefits are absent from the House bill. There is no question unemployed workers are facing tough times. Long-term unemployment is far higher than usual and nearly twice what it was when we were uh, facing our last recession in the year 2001.